All right, welcome to my first ever tutorial kind of video. Today we're going to be talking about Dehancer Pro, which is basically a plug-in for DaVinci Resolve, Premiere Pro and Final Cut that emulates the analog film look. Basically the look, you know, from all these famous Hollywood movies like Oppenheimer and James Bond. So many movies nowadays are still shot on film just to achieve this special kind of look. Full disclosure in the beginning, Dehancer reached out to me and um, asked me to review this product but they don't have any say in what I'm gonna be talking about and they also only see the video when I upload it to, video, uh, to YouTube. So yeah, I would say let's dive into DaVinci and see what this tool can do. So basically this is what Dehancer looks like. Uh, you just pull it on or drag it onto a node and then this settings window opens up. Um, the first thing you have to do is choose an input. You can either choose the camera as I've done here. This is uh, A7S III log footage. Um, or you can also like transform your log footage first with a um, color space transform now, as you can see here, and then um, choose Rec 709 as an input. And you might have seen that there is a different difference between these two images. I wouldn't say that one of each is like either one is right and the other one is wrong. I just noticed that um, if you choose your camera directly in Dehancer, I feel like the image is a bit more saturated, a bit more dense um, compared to the uh, image if you do the color space transform before Dehancer. So um, maybe one of these might help the look you want to achieve, but this is something I noticed and I think it's um, yeah, quite nice to see. If we scroll downwards, we come to film. And this is basically the heart of Dehancer. As mentioned in the beginning, Dehancer is a tool to emulate the film look, the analog film look. You know, these soft and dense colors, this bit of unsharpness and glowy, natural kind of look. This is basically what it is about. Now you can choose one of the many, many uh, profiles that Dehancer offers uh, to create the look you want to have. You know, there's Fujifilm uh, profiles here, there's lots of different Kodak uh, profiles on here. And to be honest, Dehancer does quite a well job in, uh, in doing this. Um, they have, first of all, lots of films, film profiles to choose from. And second of all, they look really, really original. Like, they really look really, really good. Uh, you can also, like, push and pull this, uh, you know, see how much you want of the profile or not. All right, um, in the next step, uh, I would go to print. If you don't know what it is, it's basically when you work with uh, lock footage, you put uh, a color space transform to Rec 709 in the end. And uh, you do this so you see what all your adjustments do. And in an example, for example, if uh, now I just have my lock footage, you know, this looks really flat and stuff. And if I edit, edit it in here, it changes the image, but it's not like the final loop I'm gonna get. So that's why I do the color space transform to Rec 709 and edit them so I can see what these settings, these adjustments do to my final image. And this is basically what print does. This shows you the final image. There's one really nice setting I like. Uh, this is the color dense density slider because it doesn't really, it's not like saturation, it doesn't make your image more saturated but it actually just makes the colors, as it says, a bit more dense, a bit more intense basically without um, oversaturating your image. This is a really nice slider to be honest. All right, let's have a look at um, the other features we just skipped. Film compression is basically something that um, manages the highlights and it's not just like the gain slider that you can turn down and then manage all the highlights by basically lowering the exposure. It's a bit different. I don't know how it works exactly, but it does quite a nice job in um, reviving the highlights basically. So if I enable it, you see immediately it's really only the blown out highlights um, are dealt with. And now you can adjust the settings here as much as you like. And I think it gives you quite a natural um, adjustment of the highlights. And I really like this feature because um, sometimes if some highlights are blown out, which happens um, quite often when I use um, the Dehancer like 
the standard settings uh, I can just go into film compression and you know adjust them a little so they don't look too blown, blown out. Um, expand is also basically just uh, your contrast settings separated in black and white point. Um, yeah, pretty self-explaining in my opinion. Then there is also um, the color head tab, which is um, basically just adjusting the colors. And to be honest, I didn't see a big difference here whether you adjust them in this one or just use the Da Vinci color wheels. Um, doesn't really matter for me. All right, so that's basically been all the um, features for creating the image regarding exposure and color of the image, basically. But of course, as you know, um, to create a film look or to uh, like emulate a proper film look, there's a bit more to that. There's like typical characteristics like the film grain, um, bloom and halation, and there's also a bit of like damage and movement that um, was like quite characteristic for proper analog film. And of course, um, since these are like necessary settings, you also have them in the Answer Pro and uh, you can adjust them each separately. So I would say let's have a closer look into this. Um, so yeah, we will start with film grain here. You can see that there's quite a lot of film grain in here. If you play the video, um, it's like really too much in my opinion. So um, we can turn it down a little to make it a bit more realistic. Um, in my opinion, Dehancer, the film grain and Dehancer looks really, really nice and like really um, convincing. It's not just like some dirt or some noise put on the image. It's like really those small black and white points um, that are played into the image. So um, yeah, quite a realistic look. I really like it. Um, yes. We're gonna have a look at halation and bloom. Um, bloom is basically just something that makes the highlights fade into its surroundings. So um, I cranked it up right here and if I enable it, you immediately see what is going to happen. Then there is halation. Halation is something that was really like typical for film in the 70s. It's this red bleeding, basically. The red bleeding of the highlights. It's like a little red shimmer. And um, this is also something that you can exaggerate um, really quickly, so you have to be careful. But let's have a look at what halation does. Um, if I crank it up all the way, you can see right away what I'm talking about. It's this red little shimmer around here. Then I want to go back to um, this image and talk about film damage, uh, film breath and gate weave. Film damage, as the name says already, is basically little flickers, like little um, yeah, damages to the image, uh, which was not uncommon uh, for proper film. You know, someone touched or some dirt came into it. Well, maybe there were like scratches and everything. So um, yeah, if we have a look at this film damage, um, I'm crank it up all the way so you see what's gonna happen. Just, you know, some, some like black dots sometimes, some scratches. Then you have film breath. Film breath is basically something, um, it's basically a little inconsistency in the exposure and the color. So um, in this example, you can see quite well what happens. If you have a look at all these like white um, parts, for example, you can see that uh, they're changing their color a little. So, you know, there's a bit of an inconsistency and some say a bit more blue, a bit more red, and they like flicker, flicker around. So that's basically what film breath does. If you have a look at the this footage uh, without the film breath, you can see that the white kind of stays the same way. And then last but not least, let's um, see what gate weave does. Gate weave is basically something that means that the um, film is jumping around a little. For now, basically I tell you what Dehancer can do and I told you that this is a great program which has like lots of lots of different settings that you can use to really achieve the look you want. Um, there are a couple of downsides though. Um, first of all, it's a very heavy program. Um, I'm using an M1 Max here and can't really achieve the play playback speed of 24 frames um, all the time. But to be fair, the adjustments you do in the settings, they work in real time. So you see immediately what you change in the image. It's literally just the playback speed that sometimes doesn't get up to full speed. 
Another thing I realized that even if you um, render short clips, the rendering takes quite long. Um, this is basically one of the biggest upturns when I bought this new Mac, that I was just rendering clips in a fraction of the time um, that they needed before. And now the dehanced clips, they it's not like I have to uh, render them for the whole night, but they just take a little longer than basically normal clips. So to round this up, I think Dehancer is a really, really nice tool to achieve what it says that you can achieve, which is the analog film look. So probably if you work a lot with this, um, investing in this product is a really great investment. By the way, if you decide to buy the Dehancer Pro version, I have a code for you, which um, gives you a 10% discount. Let's get back to what I was saying. Um, if you work a lot with the film look, I think Dehancer is one of the best tools out there to really achieve this look. If you're more a beginner that just, you know, wants to do a bit of color correction, this is probably not for you. Anyways, I recommend to um, download the free one month trial, I think it is, and see for yourself if um, you can achieve what you want to achieve with this tool or not. All right, I would say that's it. Thanks so much for watching. Uh, if you like the video, if you learned something, um, I'm very thankful if you hit the like button, put a comment in here, or uh, even subscribe to my channel. So yeah, stay tuned until next time. Cheers.